Back in the late 90s, when Sony brought out their first Abo robotic dog, I was initially quite intrigued by the idea. That was until I saw one in action and realised that it kind of stumbled around like it had arthritis and barely did anything other than mess around with a pink ball. Now, over the years, I was hoping they were going to keep updating it so it became uh, more functional, and they updated it, but it never really seemed to do a great deal more. So I kind of went off the idea. Now, Abo's back again. You can pre-order a new version of it. I know some people are very happy about this, but I've seen demonstrations of that, and it really doesn't seem to do anything more than the first versions did, and it costs a heck of a lot of money. But I'm still kind of interested in the idea of having a little robot around the house, so I went and got one of these vectors from Anki. Now, unlike the Abo, which can go wandering around your house to a limited degree, the Vector's pretty much restricted to sitting on a tabletop and just moving around a few feet at a time. It can, though, whilst it's on that tabletop, seem to perform a wider range of functions. After all, it's connected up to the internet, so it'll tell you what the weather is, for example. And you can even play a little game of blackjack on that built-in OLED screen. It works a little bit like one of the Amazon or Google Home Assistant type devices. But whilst this does cost a fraction of the price of the Sony Abo, it does cost a heck of a lot more than, say, an Amazon Echo Dot. So is it worth the price? Well, let's find out. You'll notice as well as the vector here, I've got the vector space. What's the vector space, you ask? Well, I wasn't exactly sure, but I thought, well, I'm in for a penny in for £280. Might as well get both of them and then we'll see exactly what this thing does. Now, I'd better preface this whole thing by saying, of course, I'm some middle-aged chap, and I'm pretty sure this hasn't been aimed at appealing to people of my age. This is more for children, I'd imagine, although they won't be paying for it. So let's show the parents of these children what they would be getting for Christmas. Then they could decide whether the child would find it interesting or not. Anyway, here's everything you get inside the box. This is the charging base, which has two electrical contacts on there, which marry up with the contacts on the bottom of the robot, and that is charged by a standard USB power adapter. This is the cube that the robot interacts with, and this has a pull-out tab because there's a battery inside here, and I guess that once that battery goes flat, you'll be able to take the screw out of the bottom and replace it. Now onto the Vector itself, it's a little bit smaller than I was expecting. On the front of it is an OLED screen and then beneath that is a camera. It drives around on these rubber tracks and the only way it can lift anything is with this shovel type arrangement on the front which is really just designed for manipulating the cube that comes with it. Now looking inside the instruction booklet here, you can see that I need to connect it up to the internet and I'll also need to provide my own USB power adapter. Now, the first job is to put it on its charging base and plug it into that USB adapter and then also download the app that's available for iOS or Android. So let's get on with that. This USB lead is a bit stingy in its length. A couple of feet extra wouldn't have gone amiss there. But anyway, I've plugged it in, put the device on its charging base. You can see the indicator lights come on on the back. And then after a short amount of time, it wakes up and the screen displays the web address that you need to go to to learn more. But all you're really doing is downloading the app from your app store. And then once you've got that downloaded, go through a couple of little setup procedures, connect up the device via Bluetooth to your phone. And then once you've got those two things connected up, tell it the Wi-Fi password and once it connects up to Wi-Fi it then downloads an update. So whilst it's doing that let's have a look at this vector space thing I bought. Now I wasn't entirely sure what this was but I thought I should get it just in case and it turns out that I've just bought a very expensive plastic tray. It's got rubber feet on the bottom but that's pretty much all it is. A plastic tray with a cutout in the corner for the charging base. So let's go back to the robot again. Changing a few things on here, such as the units and where you are in the world, so it knows the weather, and then take the battery tab out of the cube. You can see we've got some lights in here now, and let's see what this thing does. Right, the first thing to say is that the phone app isn't controlling it. It's just giving me some information as to what I should do to set it up, because it's all voice controlled. So the first thing you have to do is say, hey, Vector, which then wakes it up, gets it listening to you. And to start with, you do things such as getting it to recognize your face so that later on you can say, hey, Vector, who am I? And it will repeat your name back to you. And you can see here at the moment, I've asked it, what's the weather like? And it's told me it's 63 degrees, a nice sunny day. Hey, Vector. Set a one minute countdown timer. You can see there's a lot of work being done here to imbue the robot with some fun, quirky, Wally type personality. It's quite effective, really. Let's just see what happens when that timer's up.
Now at that point you could either speak to it to tell it to stop the alarm or press the dot on the back which is a button. You could also press that button to activate it as well instead of saying hey vector and just like all these other devices it's just listing out for that keyword it's listing out for hey vector and then once you've said that the lights come on on the back and then you can give it a further command one of those commands is to take a picture and the camera below the screen on the front there will point towards you and take a photo which it then sends to your phone it doesn't put it into the cloud it's just going straight to your phone and then from there you can then do what you want with that picture if the privacy issues of a web connected robot with a camera on the front are of a concern, then I suggest you go and have a look on their website and read about security and privacy, but that's something you're gonna to have to make your own mind up on. Hey Vector, look at me. Now, whilst the whole thing is controlled by voice, the app does have a few little features in here to tell you what commands to use for the various things that it can do. And I looked through here and initially I thought that it had loads of things it could do. But when you read through them, there aren't all that many. For example, you can say, hey, Vector, good robot, and it'll just sort of blink at you. And along the bottom of the screen, now this is quite useful. It gives you a status update as to exactly what's happening at the moment with the Vector. And you can do things like fist bumps and things but a lot of this stuff gets old very quickly after you've used it once or twice it can play one game which is blackjack yes no One of its features is the ability to move rhythmically in time with music. It likes music with a good beat though. When it's doing this, the lights on its back change colour as well. It doesn't seem to like every tune though. Now as far as that cube, well it's a bit of a mystery. It will sometimes use it to stand up on its tracks with, other times it will just roll it over. Sometimes it picks it up and sometimes it hits it and the lights change colour. There is some kind of interaction between the two where the robot will look at the cube and then the cube starts flashing. But I thought it was going to be some kind of game that you could get involved in with those symbols on the cube. But really it's just something for the robot to play around with on its own. And then other times it just completely ignores it. Once the battery has worn down, which in my experience so far seems to be after say 15 minutes or so, the robot will return automatically to its charging base and charge itself back up, or you can ask it to do this earlier if you want. You've got some limited customization options, you can change the volume for the various cheeps, chirps and whistles, and you can also change the colour of the eyes. Now you might be wondering about edge detection. After all, you don't want to buy one of these things, have it drive itself off the edge of a table onto a hard wooden floor and immediately break. So here I've said, uh, come here, and it's heading towards me. And you can see once it gets to the edge, it does have a detection to see that it's gone off the edge and it stops itself before it falls on the floor. It's not foolproof though. Quite often it will drive along something along the edge and then get its track stuck off the edge and you have to pick it up and put it back on to get it working again. Now, I thought that might be because this particular table has a bit of a slope at the edge, which might be confusing it somehow. But I have tried it on all the different surfaces in the house. This one's got a slope as well, and it happened there, of course. But I've tried it on various tables and it does seem to have a few little issues here it's got itself stuck on this one again tried it on that one you can see at the far end of the room which has a nice straight edge it got itself stuck on there as well and here it's got uh, it's still stuck with a cube and then finally I tried it on this one it didn't seem to have too much of a trouble on here I think maybe because the edge is rounded on here it always seems to have a bit of one track still stuck on there so if it does go off the edge it can bring itself back on again but I wasn't sure whether the black and white was confusing it a little bit here it did seem to act a little bit irrationally and you can see here it does this kind of angry movement sometimes and unfortunately it decided to coincide it with the point at which it had already got itself hanging over the edge and obviously that wasn't a good idea and if I had got a wooden floor that might have caused a problem.
Now the built-in functions such as what's the weather, set a timer, what time is it and take a photo can be activated by issuing two commands. First off you say hey vector, it wakes up and then you say for example what's the weather in Sydney and it came up with 57 degrees Fahrenheit, you can change it to centigrade if you want and then showed a nice animation afterwards. I think it's using the screen to its uh, fullest abilities there. I'd like to see some of the other modes use the screen in a little bit more detail like that but anyway as it's connected up to the internet you can also do these other type of commands that are similar to the things you do with the Amazon or the Google devices etc where you ask it questions and it retrieves the information from the internet but these are a three-step process you have to say hey vector to wake you up then you have to say I have a question and then you ask your question that whole process takes quite a while to do hey vector I have a question What's 1 divided by 0? So if you've got used to using any kind of voice assistant device in the home, then the way this works does seem a little bit sluggish in comparison. What's the distance between London and Liverpool? So you might just decide to keep this thing on a shelf somewhere and use it as a home assistant for setting timers, telling you about the weather, all that kind of stuff. But then you might start feeling a little bit guilty if you put it in the vector space because in that small area it's unable to use its cube. It needs to be outside there to play around with that and that does seem to be its favourite toy. They've got a bit of a love-hate relationship but I'm starting to feel ever so slightly guilty about keeping the robot in such a small space and putting its toy on the outside makes me feel a little bit sad really. Over time the Vector's due to gain additional features through software updates and I read just yesterday there are plans to integrate it with Amazon's Echo. However as a voice controlled home assistant it leaves a lot to be desired and an Echo Dot costs a heck of a lot less. Of course you're paying a lot for the robot side but when it all boils down that really doesn't do a great deal other than just wander around a tabletop. I do think though it stands a good chance of being a big hot ticket item this Christmas with no new consoles out this year perhaps this will become the must have toy that everyone wants but nobody can get. Although I do wonder how many of the people who do get one for Christmas are still going to be using it regularly when January comes around but of course isn't that always the case. But don't get me wrong it does give a great demo and anyone who sees it will most likely be charmed and it's even almost useful at times but ultimately it might be a better idea getting your child a hamster. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.